Well, let's just start recording and then I will cut it anyway, so it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I will just start and people will pop in off the time, I guess. You know. Was that a clean up in the last second? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dude, if I didn't have my green screen, I would be lost. <laughs> That's the trick to hide your mess, is a green screen. Yeah. That's how it works. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Hopefully you hear me all well. I'm going to start now. And yeah, so welcome everyone to uh, another Patreon call here. This time we have the champ himself, Farme Arne, uh, with us. Uh, nice to have you here. I'm super stoked to talk with you again. I, I, I love our first discussion. Thank you for having me. Yeah, uh, it's always nice to talk with you. Um, must be a right for you, right? Um, but before we go to that right, um, just tell us about you and your background, and I know you by now have this out of your mind, right? Just go step by step. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, I'm 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 a professional MTG player. I've, I've played for the last five years competitively, just kind of through. I'm 24 years old, uh, living in Berlin right now. Grew up in Hamburg, and I'm sponsored by Haruya. And yeah, I'm I'm going full ham on on streaming and uh, on on playing competitively. I I am. Yeah, I just want to be on the top. That's that was always my goal, and that's what I'm here for. Yeah, you definitely uh, had a huge, huge uh, ride on the championship. Um, I think almost. Are you undefeated? I think you were undefeated right until to the end. Um, I I started eight and zero. I was the last undefeated. Yes. Yeah, yeah. and just won the entire thing with Rogues and Aura. We have so many Rogues fans in our Patreon. And they're all not here and they're like this. every time something happens with rogue they add me somewhere because i never like to play against it so they they miss out but i'm pretty sure they will come in later um so what made you decide to go for rogues and auras besides uh being pressured by your team, <laughs> by my team. um for that tournament uh, we just figured out that that aggro was a little bit on the decline before because timo was dominating and solta was dominating everyone was prepared for monorad and so on and um, Timur and Sultai were both decks that we felt favored with our rogues list. So um, in the end, I decided between Sultai and rogues. Sultai would have been like a safer choice because it's like a broader 50-50. It even has game against the red decks, but I didn't want to play the mirrors. And, and it seemed to be Sultai was like the, the most um, predicted deck as being the top deck, so everyone was aiming at it. So I just played the rogue deck, the rogue deck, and um, yeah, got rewarded by not playing against any mono red players. Mm. And it turned out great. And for Auras, uh, I tried to play Blue White Control, Junk Food. Didn't really like any of these. I didn't want to play Junk Food Mirrors all day. And Blue White Control just wasn't as, as it just wasn't strong enough. And my team was working on this Aura stack for quite a while already. Um, Inky MTG um, was like the, the, the leader of that testing group. So I just put my trust in, in, in their results. They were really confident mm. on the deck. So that's how I ended up there. Yeah, Mr. Aura. Uh, Jonathan Goodman, huh? Definitely uh, had an impact there, and yeah, um, he's finished with school right now, right? He can he can work on magic now, so <laughs> I just saw something like this, but I'm not too sure. Um, yeah, great. I mean, you won the championship. Uh, you started streaming again. Now you streamed before, and I think let's do a follow up questionnaire here. I mean, most of the questions about the tournament uh, you already answered quite a lot, so. How was the post-tournament journey for you? The post-tournament journey, yeah, I, I, it's like uh, you, you, you're, you're on cloud nine, of course. You're, mm. you're feeling incredible. Um, yeah. You can't believe it for, for a week after. Um, it just and then then I started streaming immediately. I, I put my time uh, into it, and, and it went incredibly well. So many people tuned in. We had. Uh, I, it's just really successful too. I started coaching, so there has been uh, a, ch a life, like not a life change, but it, there has been so much change going on in my life recently. Mm. All the podcasts and so on. Mm. Um, my life was nothing, nothing like before. I'm, I'm so much more busy, and, mm. um, but I'm loving it. Uh, it's it's, mm. it's 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 a blessing to be so busy and uh, to be doing mm. things. Yeah, it's great to do the things you love to do, right? And actually, will live off it, right? That's that's the the main thing that like, you can just get up stream play magic do content and go to sleep if you sleep that's the question and then you just repeat it right every day that's that's the way to go 
It is lovely, yeah. yeah. So I watch your stream as well, and your numbers have been crazy sometimes. Like sometimes you have like a thousand, and people really like this is the hardest part, right? Um, you can spike a tournament, you get the hype, but then you have to keep like this audience and. I think you do a great job with keeping the audience and playing decks and doing a thing and have the ASMR voice and so on. And so <laughs> people definitely like to stick around there. And what what do you like the most when you stream? Is it like testing decks or engaging with the audience or what's what's the thing you like? What's the thing I like most? I guess the moments. Um, I mean, I, I think I haven't really done that a lot lately or like in general, but I think I can do that more often. Like just joking around goofing around making jokes making weird voices like mm. making people laugh like making people laugh is, is what mm. i like to do at parties and, mm. and whenever i'm in social settings i know you you don't see me as a like comedic kind of personality because i'm always the serious um face on magic and professional and so on but that's that's what i really enjoy to do and i think i want to i want to incorporate more more humor mm. and more fun uh into into this whole thing more personality yeah and um we'll see like i i it, it, it really is, is a conflicting thing because when I play magic, I'm like really focused in, I'm mm -hmm. really zoned in, and I want to like just win the game. So it's like conflicting with this like easy to go attitude that maybe some other magic streamers have where they're just like, oh, I don't care, or like, or they, they get really emotional when, when some top deck happens. And, mm -hmm. and I'm like just sitting there, okay, that top deck was, oh, but I still have to. Uh, uh. <laughs> so, um, now, yeah. well, I see, but I, I just, uh, I love the interaction, just having mm. people around you when you play, is just really cool, you feel like you're in a community, and people are, like, with you, and to talk about the plays, and you learn together, mm. so that's nice. Yeah, this, I think this is a, something that will come over time, right, when you, when you learn more how to interact with your stream, or, like, you learn what your people really like about you, and then you go more in that direction. Um, I think many start off more serious, go play by play, and then suddenly you open up more and more. I, I know that myself, and then you're just moving around and having a good time with your with your people. And that's I think that's the best thing as a streamer if you have a community that is there and moving around with you, right? I mean, if you know Twitch, like the entire Twitch culture, with the rest in peace, Kek W, by the way. Um, uh, this entire culture um, is huge, and people love it, right? And I love yeah. it too. I mean, that's. that's... <laughs> Did you just say anti-culture? No, no, that's Twitch culture. No, not oh, anti-culture. Yeah, yeah. No. Oh, okay. This, yeah. this entire uh, you entire, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah you know, yeah, here yeah, we German natives here, so <laughs> <laughs> you understand what I mean. Yeah, but it's it's great to see you succeed there, and now with streaming, you prioritize competitive over streaming or will there be maybe this is a hard one this is a hard one do content creation and play competitive is really tricky i learned it by myself um how do you how are you going to do it so from my personal experience if there's a delay on a stream i'm just not so into it watching it and if there's no delay i'm really into it i like it's there's excitement mm. there's like you're close to it you feel you're in it that's my personal thing i know for some people they they don't mind a delay as much so I've played some tournaments already online mm. for, for, for money, um, like mm. the inside ones, yep. and I found them without delay. Yep. Um, so and it, it, it has been super popular, so yep. I think I'm going to keep on doing that. Um, it's interesting to see what happens in the weeks before, like a strict saving championship or a challenger gauntlet. Mm. I have to see how I manage that. Right now I still have a pro team that I'm working with. Mm. So... If I want to keep working with them, I probably can't give infinite of information out. Yep. But I can definitely still stream the stock decks and um, and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. So Which, yeah, it's yeah. it's it's a tough question. I have to see how I maneuver this. I I'll, I haven't faced it too much with too much thought, but I I will I will have to think about it very soon. Mm -hmm. so you can just play a deck and change like five cards. You know you will not play, and then people go like, hmm, maybe that's smart. You can go the total five head route there, maybe. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> completely uh, make uh, people you know, get the wrong information. But yeah, I I wonder how it goes for you with the with both, because I don't think there are many traditional streamer, and I will put you more into the traditional streaming right now, watching you. Um, that also play competitive on, on that high level because it is hard to do, right? Most of the competitive pros players, they stream occasionally, they stream what they like, but that's about it. And once there is a, a tournament, they, they don't stream. They like closed in their tournaments, right? In their teams and just play all day. And yeah, I wonder how yeah. it's going to be. 
Yeah, one or two. I mean, would we at least? Yeah, I mean, it's tough. It's it's tough for the competitive players, especially with all mm. the league weekends going on. Uh, it mm. would be lovely if they could stream more, but right mm. now the system doesn't allow to. Maybe you find a streamer team. I mean, Jonathan is already streaming, right? And they just everyone streams and goes like whatever, right? That would be new content, by the way. Stream yeah. preparation. Just saying. I, I yeah. was thinking about that. Yeah, just yeah. Pre like Kenneth did that for a while, like, where he prepared yeah, yeah. for the tournament yeah. and just streamed everything and just yeah. gave out the information. Yeah. That was pretty popular too. I yeah. mean, it's certainly interesting. Yeah, yeah and especially you have people who, I mean, like Christoph, you, and then you have like Ginky, maybe Tomas. I don't know who joins, but you you get some people who play and just just yeah, that would be a cool content. Not I would I would definitely watch it. So um, if I have the time, but um, before we go further, do you do you have a question here? Do I have a question? No, those two uh, below oh, us. Oh. I'm not sure if they're below for you, but they're below for me. You want to go, Mike? Uh, I don't have a question just yet, but I'll probably have one after you say something. I guess for me, you know, when you're preparing for the big tournaments, um, you know, how many different people are you testing with and, and how much time leading up to the tournament is dedicated? Do you really, you know, because the metagame, I feel like it changes week to week. I mean, if you're paying attention to SCG or some of the other popular online tournaments, so, you know, you probably can't start preparing too far in advance. So what is, you know, what's kind of your common schedule leading up to a big tournament? Um, to a big tournament, I'd say three, two to three weeks. Yeah, that's like, a, mm, Three weeks is usually the starting point, and they're like two weeks before you really get into it. And and for small tournaments, it's usually less like four or five days. Mm. Um, yeah. So are you in on on a deck pretty early on, and then just really getting used to all the different matchups and the sideboarding and things like that, or does it take a while to kind of lock in on what you play? It definitely takes a lot of time for me to make my decision. I, I, I rarely have like a deck that I'm really um, confident on um, a week into the testing or two weeks into the testing. I really have to un, 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 unpack every stone and, and, and make sure that, that I don't miss anything. And I keep my options open usually. I play a lot of different decks and I'm rarely a person that like really fixes on one deck. I, of course, I have my biases, you know, of, like playing blue decks. Um, over over playing like um, weird aura decks for example where <laughs> your one creature dies and then you sit there and you cry um, mm -hmm. but did you have to be adaptable right sometimes you even have to play that all in deck and, and, and it goes well apparently too uh, for some people um, so yeah I just try to stay flexible as much as possible um, that, that is a weakness too because then sometimes I'm registering a deck that I have not had that much practice with um, it has strength and weaknesses yeah so now leading up for the next pro tour, I mean, you obviously locked in with uh, winning the last one. Um, I'm not even sure when it's going to be, but now we have a new set, right? Strixhaven out there. And this set is, I would say, quite different from others. Um, we have uh, a little bit of impact. I would say a little, little, little bit of impact in standard, but we have impact in historic and now uh, we saw people playing uh, rogues in historic and I mean, you were also definitely someone who plays uh, rogues as well what what is your thought right now on the meta and in historic in general for first um yeah historic is so lovely since the mystical archives um like i i had my um i'm missing the english word but obviously it was a little scary seeing all these broken cards enter the format and there still might be something too broken that might have not been discovered yet but it has been like so far pretty fair everything like fair soothing wasn't too busted and it, like nothing is too busted so that's really cool to see and um it's just so much fun like all these new decks these interactions the it's, it's like i call it like baby legacy legacy is like <laughs> the old format that, that where you have all the cards and then here you have like the the historic with the brand. So i absolutely love it and, and about the meta it's hard to i could i could give you my thoughts on it right now but mm. it's always shifting and we have new decks coming in i feel like this this weekend where we have the historic um, SCG qualifier will, will solidify the meta game, and then afterwards we have the league weekend in historic too. So that's going to be exciting. And right now, I think it's just uh, similar to Sand. It's shifting up and down. We have like Gruul and Celestial Company and Rogues mm. at the top. Yep. The, do, th that will make me make John Sacrifice come back because <laughs> claim the first spawn is really excellent against mm. 
these company decks. Um, mm. Yeah, Storm is amazing, and Strixhaven mm. impact on standard that is obviously uh, yeah yeah thrown yeah. uh, a bit right now. Yeah, you have the exact same view as me. We have this Monday call where we talk about the meta, and I was ex saying the exact same words. Three decks, and Chan will come back because of it. So I'm super glad you backed me up there. <laughs> um, I know you also like to play Control, and I saw you playing like Chess Guy uh, a lot. And what is your thought of Control? I mean, we talked about the strong creature based deck and rogues going tempo control can shift it up no matter what. What is your thought about classic control with all the new cards? Um, so, yeah, I was digging it definitely into that. I, I, I tried Jessica control, um, uh, blue black for different variants, mm -hmm. different variations with magma opus. Um, currently, I'm um, there where I think that magma opus is just a little too fancy and it's just too clunky, it's just unnecessary. It's enough um, to have the fairy or shark typhoons. Even I'm playing a blue-black control deck that I think, sorry, <laughs> that I'm, uh, went six and two at the inside esports, making top sixteen. Uh, and in on ladder, I'm like seventeen and one right now with the deck. I mean, ladder is ladder, but it's still impressive. Mm. Um, so on that deck, focus on Nazat and um, like just mm. lean to the ground. Nazat being the best blue card right now, I think, with brainstorm, etc. So I think there's really the core. Play four Nazats, play some mm. Escanters, play Discard. I think black is the best pairing to the blue. And you could play Asper, Jeskai, I don't know, Lightning Helix, Prismary Commander, Braid, Rip Apart. These are all good cards, but nothing's like really that, that super strong. So I'm, I'm leaning towards either playing blue-white, having good mana base and powerful spells there, or like blue-black. Mm. That's where I think um, is the juice for control. And I certainly think it is it has gotten a lot better with memory labs and brainstorm now. Mm. So what do you think will happen when Chant comes back? Um, like, as, uh, so the control matchup for Chant is always really interesting because once this trails is on board, you go like, yeah, well, I cannot one for one anymore, right? So this is going to be really tricky. What do you think will happen to those decks when Chant comes back and are there enough tools to defeat it? Chant food will be tough. That will be certainly difficult. Mm -hmm. Junk Company, on the other hand, I think is definitely dealable with. Like you have cards like Shadow's Verdict that entirely destroy the deck mm. of Grafter's Cage. Yeah. Um, I think if just Junk Company comes back, Control is still in an all right spot. They have to adapt their sideboard and main deck maybe a little bit. But Junk Food is, is trouble. It really mm. is trouble. Um, you have Rip Apart, which is like a nice clean answer to um, Trail of Crumbs yeah. in the main deck. Of Jazz guy, but then Jazz guy has other weaknesses. Um, yeah, if John Food comes back, I'm uncertain Control has a future. But mm -hmm. what I think is that John Food is just a tad too slow with the new cards entering the format. And um, mm. yeah, yeah, there are some good results from John Food recently because people, it's always the same, right? The new set drops, everyone's like building decks, and then someone's like, no, 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 I'm gonna play John Food here and gonna prey on them. It's it's always the same, right? And and people. The Rogue deck, at least, is a new addition to Historic. I mean, people tried it before, but now with Memory Lapse and Discard Spells and whatever, right? It's, it's, it's definitely really strong. Um, and it's always so painful to play against, but to play it, it's quite fun, though. That is that is a fact, right? So, um, That's true, yeah. yeah. So now, with this tournament coming up uh, on the weekend again, do you know already what you're going to play, or...? Secret. Secret. No, I, <laughs> I don't know what to play yet. Um, mm. I, I like the control deck, of course. Um, people in my chat are always nagging me to play Pact, Tainted Pact. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Some people are having a lot of success yeah. with that deck. Yeah. Um, Rogues is a solid choice, I suppose. I think the Screen White Company deck, it just has game against everyone. It's yep. like sneaking through, sort of. Nobody's really paying attention yeah. to it, but it's quite a strong deck. Um, so I really don't know where to go. I'm probably going to play Brainstorm, like you know me. So <laughs> just got to find the right list there. With the Field of Ruins, right? To get the extra fetch in, right? <laughs> That's just the yeah, best. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. my mana base with colorless lands. Let's go. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, yeah. What, was the, what was the list again? Uh, you, I just had to put a code on and take my... Um, well, he, he thinks... Did had game against everything? Uh game against oh the celestia company deck has good game against most decks yeah, it's, yeah. it looks really strong and i saw san san uh, from lotus box uh, did also work on it a bit more has had some new versions on it and i think he's still 
also top 20 or something with it. I also played it, made a video, and just uh, I never lost a game with it. It's pretty, pretty strong. Um, yeah. It feels you can defeat everything. I mean, there are, a com I mean, company alone is just so good, right? It's strong against control, and then you have all those creatures that do something really annoying. Or that's just a free mana 5-5. Five, five. That's also fine sometimes if you play that card. It's a decent, decent card. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, and in standards, is there anything that, that, that you think has changed, or is it just it's the same? I, I hadn't had the opportunity to play much. I, just, I played one day uh, when the metagame challenge was uh, mm. on Monday, and we played some Titan's Nest mm. Um, mm. and goofed around and made four color Titan's Nest with Magma Opus to, and, and this <laughs> Mary command, filling up the graveyard this, this way, and like mm. <laughs> there was a weird pile. Um, I don't think much has changed, but Titan's Nest is a sweet deck. I don't know. Uh, I want to dig more into that. Maybe mm. it's just a trap. Like, it could just be. Yeah, I have uh, tomorrow I set up a. Uh... So Chase too, the Korean player, and me tomorrow make a video about the about the deck, and I'm looking forward to hear his uh, thoughts about the deck. He also wrote a guide, I think that just came out today. So I have to yeah, make the video. yeah, it just went up on. Uh, yeah, yeah, YouTube. yeah. I can link it too. Yeah, so I have to make the video with him tomorrow. Uh, I, I, I mean, I, I love Demir Control, right? That was like my, my, my love deck in standard, and now with Titan's Nest, it's it's close to it, right? But I played against Swift. Uh, Theo, the French pro player, just yesterday, and I think I lost to one, but the game was endless, and he had like no cards in hand, top decked one card, and suddenly he just never stopped playing. I was like, what in the world should you do against this? And I was like, that deck is good. <laughs> if, if that is possible, that was that was impressive. I, I, I agree. Like, I mean, this deck is good against slow decks, I think, but mm. I, I, played it, I played it myself, and I played it against mono white, mono white, mono red, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, <laughs> the classic. If you play it in the last week of a month, then I would say you play more against mono red and mono white players uh, than usual, right? So that's that's definitely something to consider. And all the Vinota players uh, who just are around there. What is your thought about Vinota? What do you think about that card? Uh, my personal thought: I've never really played that deck. I, mm. I stray away from these weird creature decks. I mean, n not weird. I don't want to be disrespectful to anyone. I mean, you, you can. It's just not my <laughs> not, not my cup of tea. Um, I, I have no idea. I, I probably not good. I, I would I would I would guess. Um, is, is is there anything that changed? Do they have any blade historian or? Yeah. So Ma So there are multiple people trying the deck and building the deck, and I think Martin Schuza built a version of it. And multiple people tested it out, and they were like 23 4, and they had super good results with it. But then again, I think if <laughs> that depends, right? <laughs> you know, it's it's still Vinota, right? And if you have good hits with Vinota, you're really good, right? If you don't, if you whiff, then it's a bit harder. It's definitely more consistent without Vinota now, due to also like the Elite Spellbinder, which is just overall a strong card. And for me, Vinota never just doesn't like me. It's just a fact, so I cannot play those decks. I tried it multiple times. I managed to whiff uh, four times in a row, uh, and I had like over twenty creatures, which is, I don't know how I do that, but I can do it. <laughs> so that's a thing. And then I was like, mm, no, 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 I don't play that stuff anymore. <laughs> Back to demon control. Where's yeah. my tome? Oh, Where's my tome? I need tome. Yeah. <laughs> Even with ultimate. Yeah, so I good. love that card. Like people called me Danny Tome Law uh, for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I love that card. It's just such a good card. And I think Kraus recently sent me a list of his Is it Dragons? Is it Tempo Control? You know what I mean? And he changed a bit and added Photo Main. I was like, now it's a really good deck. Uh, <laughs> so I need to test that myself as well. Um, it's definitely also on the control. But yeah, standard, I think Strixhaven. It's, it's such an awkward set. So what do you think will happen when Eldrain drops out? Ooh, that's a big question. I, one thing I wanted to add, I think the, the Elite Spellbinder is a fantastic card and, mm. and really pushes up the white decks and stuff. Yeah. I think that card is really good. And that's going to see, like Strixhaven has some good cards, but yeah, mm -hmm. Eldraine is just very powerful. Yeah. Um, what's going to happen when Eldraine rotates out? So then we will have Kaltheim, um, we'll have Zendika Rising, mm -hmm. we'll have Strixhaven, and we have the, 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 the set coming in, in, in fall and the set coming in summer. Mm. So there's probably uh, maybe guild themed sets like with magma opus, dragon style decks. I mean, mm. it's hard to predict uh, with two sets still coming out, but uh, there might also be 
still probably mono red frostbite things going around faces haven is gonna be big mono white will maybe be yeah. a top deck mono white has mm. a lot of tools still that's what left. i think too i think mono, mono white will probably be be one of the top three decks that will be around once this yeah. happens it, it looks really good it's like just... all the white cards are, are in the current yeah. format right white cards imagine white cards uh mm -hmm. yeah they printed like the operation now, now yeah. the spellbinder the mall is pretty good and the cheap uh don't touch my creature creatures are also really good um, you have like all sit and the dog right protection mm -hmm. color and uh, indestructible they seem also decent and haven yeah haven is a really good card i mean it's, it's powerful i mean even redane too to kind of tamp down yeah. the slow decks so. yeah. i mean you're losing you're losing giant killer and you're losing jabra of the flock yeah, and Arc, Elseid, and, uh, and the dog rotating. Yeah, well. I think so. I think so. Oh, Theros, right? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's both. Uh, yeah. M21, Ikoria, Theros, and Eltrain are all rotating out. Where's the dog from? Which M21. Said? M21, okay. I, I'm i sad to see him go. I really I really mm. love the dog, but... Yeah, the dog is pretty powerful. You got the Usher of the Fallen. That's yeah. a good one, right? 2-1, that makes tokens, yeah, definitely. And then... There's also some the one in Sandigar, the one two that maybe grows bigger, depending on what else comes in the new sets, right? Uh, it's maybe playable. You definitely need some good one drops to have a, a mono white weenie type of deck for sure. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mono black has been a bit of a, a bit of a slacker recently since Night of the Even Legion went out. There were like some good mono black cards, and nowadays you just have, I don't even know what you have, right? It's yeah. Just you have the rogues, I guess. That's yeah. that's what you got. That's, that's I mean, Skyclave Shade is a ridiculously yeah. good aggressive creature. I mean, that card would have been in other formats if where black was more supported, would mm. have been a standout, mm. annoying threat. It's so yeah. good, mm. but it just doesn't have a home, you know? Yeah. yeah. And nowadays, you cannot play Destroy. There's no control deck where you have, like, a rough effect that destroys things, right? Every, every card is literally Exile, 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 except maybe Binding, but that's versatile. I guess so, yeah, you're right. Like yeah. in standard, that's true. Extinction yeah. You have and nothing, yeah. Because of that reason, every creature is a bit, uh, you, you cannot destroy me. It's like, it's literally like that. And in in historic, I mean, you have obviously like four mana refs that no backside, but even there, I'm not even sure. You still want the exile card, Chunt is around, right? Like, Verdict is a huge card. And yeah. so on. So the, the classic ref effects seem to be going away. They just, they don't exist anymore. Yeah, yeah. Like Shadow's Verdict is surprisingly uh, strong. Yeah. Um, yeah. That card has really, really, um, I mean, when, when did it start? Like when, when, when Call Time came out, that card was not seeing much play before, I think. But no. then, then no. all of a sudden, everyone's no. playing. I, I mean, you are the demon control guy. I mean, who am I talking to? You probably played that card before Call Time came out. I, I played it, yeah, but I was always high on Extinction Event because of the mana, right? But once I added the clock, then I felt like, okay, well, I can still play the other card turn four. <laughs> it's still fine. I always love to have that one or one or two of clocks in, in the Demon Control decks because it's just, it's yeah, what it does, I, right? I like the card too. Yeah, it's a <laughs> super underrated card. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely a different time this time with Strixhaven coming out. And most of the streamers just went straight to Historic. And you, it's so hard to find standard content. So I tried to make some standard content, which is still really limited to do because all the decks feel i mean you, you have support cards for ultimatum right you have the onyx the new professor that is uh yeah you can combo with it foreign click so you have the new winoto support there are a little bit cards but it's still the same decks and uh, there's not really a new deck that's super like oh this is there's one deck that um florian klein played recently um it's the Rakdos sacrifice deck in standard with the pests and the avatar and even like second on channel fireball showdown and second in the german tournament as well and on one day which is pretty impressive but besides that i didn't saw like a new deck with new cards that did well so yeah yeah standards yeah this is the front of a drain i suppose and we have some mm. upgrades here and there but i i can see that the standard content is is, is, is not great maybe you just gotta jump on the historic uh, yeah historic i do i do i do my historic in the morning right i like i played the gruel i played the rogues i played all the decks to just get the information right you need but always wanted to brew a new time spiral deck not time spiral the yeah yeah time walkers um just love extra turns just it's like the biggest 
biggest Gandalf thing to do in history, right? <laughs> it's just like, mm -mm, I'm, I'm, I'm playing again. Um, what, what is your favorite card uh, since we're already there? What is like your favorite type of card or your favorite card in general? Um, favorite type of card is probably a blue spell that's with instant on it. I mean, <laughs> um, what I used to do when I top aided a GP and they, they always ask you the question at the end, what's your favorite card? And I always put their island. I guess I always <laughs> put that in the end. Yeah, I know, but they all decide. <laughs> so <it's okay. laughs> um, yeah, no, I mean, I like Blue, I like Dragonlord Ojutai, I like Jace Prince Prodigy. Those are like mm. the memories when I started grinding con competitively mm. PPDQs. It was like Cards of Tarkia, Magic Origins with Languish and stuff in, in mm. that standard era, and it was just so much fun. The games were fun, the, the mm. cards were powerful. You had Cards of Tarkia with all these amazing free color spells. Um, th those are those are like, um, yeah, my, my favorite cards. Ashiok. The Nightmare Weaver. Oh my god, I, w I want that card. Oh, I want Kalita's trade off. Get they could just put all these in historic, right? They could yeah. just end. I just wanted to ask you, I just wanted to ask you if, if you could choose a card you want in historic, which one would it be? But I think you just answered it right there, right? Yeah, Kalitas. Kalitas is like yeah. high up on the list because yeah. Kalitas, like the four mana free four life link guy yeah. that exiles uh, your yeah. opponent's creatures when they die and you make zombies, it's so good against Junt. You know, you don't have a good threat that stabilizes the board, mm. hard to deal with because it doesn't get hit by claim. And uh, yeah, I guess rid of the entire exile thing. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I wish to see affinity like Ravager stuff, but I'm not even sure. <laughs> that's like my thing I love to do, but I'm not even sure if that's playable with a Mayhem Devil on the board and claims like, mmm, don't think that's the way to go here. <laughs> True, afraid. Yeah. yeah, so I wonder what, what do you think of Historic as a format where they can just ban cards and allow new cards in? And, and what do you think of this? That's a big question. Honestly, I, I guess I'm not that much of a theorizer, or like a f philosoph philosopher in, in, in terms of historic and magic. I don't really f uh, go go deeper into why and mm -hmm. if this is even a good idea. I just do it because, it's... Yeah, I mean, I'm enjoying myself a lot right now with Brainstorm and everything. And uh, I think it's super cool to be able to re-explore some of these cards that, that I used to play with um, in other formats and then have them here in this format. I think it's a really cool idea in general. I mean, it's... I don't know. It's just like I guess I could make a Twitter post saying like I want this card in this in, in historic. Maybe three hundred people like it and some big pros retweet it, and maybe this card will actually enter historic. Like it's like <laughs> you should try format. it. Yeah, I, mean, I sent you a list of cards just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's 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 weird. It's like I wish 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 you something um, sort mm. of format, but so far i think it has been a, a good success and it's really getting there i mean i was skeptical at the beginning but um mm. i don't know i enjoy it yeah yeah i think it's i think overall it's it's a really good thing to do because right the paper is always tied to everything and 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 with with having a format only for esports um you have to you can just balance the the entire thing in and out and i think historic is a is a really good thing and before now, before Mystical Archive, people were like, yeah, it's maybe Pioneer Plus, maybe it's Pioneer level. And where would you put the power level now of Historic with all the new cards? I think it's better than Pioneer, actually. Yeah, like, it's better with the new cards. Yeah. yeah, it's stronger than Pioneer. I mean, Pioneer doesn't have Arclight Phoenix. Um, mm. Pioneer doesn't even... I mean, do they have the John Company deck? They... they... I mean, Pioneer, it's so, like, many Pioneer decks get established in historic like boss of auras you have the mono yeah. green like you kind of see that trend there they they used to have luca for a longer time they used to have uh, reclamation for a longer time um rest in peace reclamation yeah, yeah. um they used to have that for a longer time but uh, obviously now they don't have brainstorm and cards like that i mean yeah just... yeah I... Yeah, I think the, the historic is, is, is stronger mm. than that. The pioneers kind of like get pushed out, sort of. I think. I mean, historic mm. is not a limelight. Yeah. In the, in the spotlight. Yeah. So they want to still add pioneer, I think, to the to the arena thing. And what do you think of having one mythic ladder for all the formats? Hmm. That is another good question. I, that I, I honestly have not put much thought into. Um, one mythic. I mean, it, I mean, the more Magic Arena expands, the more you might want to have a ladder for standard and historic. Mm. Um, because at some point, it's I don't know, like 
Uh, it's tough to say. Like you, you have all these players competing in both formats for these one thousand two hundred slots, essentially mm -hmm. for the MIQ, yep. which is uh, quite condensed. And I mean, I, I think it would make sense to make it a split thing. I don't know why they haven't done it yet. Um, is there a particular reason why they haven't done it? Do you know that? Uh, there's nothing uh, public. I just I, I just think it's because of queue time. Um, let's say uh, a format is really hot and then. Uh, the queue time for the other format will get really low. Maybe that's mm -hmm. the main reason. Um, but other than that, I really don't know. For me personally, I would love to see it, but not mainly for the reason that you can compete or get the like. I love to compete as well, right? So I like to have a high ranking in this and this and this and this. So for that reason, it will be really cool to to see that. True, true. Uh, I mean, in limited, it's also split, right? But there's only a best of one ladder. I don't know why there's a best of three, but that doesn't. You know, tangle yeah. me too much. Doesn't make more sense, yeah. So, do you also play limited, or are you more of the constructed player? Uh, I do play limited, but I'm more a constructed player. I, I do play limited for fun, but more with, with people in real life. Like, that's mm. like we are coming together yep. um, with friends, which is obviously tougher in the current situation. Mm. Um, yeah, I play limited from time to time too, just for fun, to relax, have some, some nice limited matches. Mm. Sealed is fun. I, I mm. can get really addicted to sealed. I'm definitely going to play a bunch of sealed before the arena open. Mm. Um, but yeah, construct is my strength, and I like winning, so that's why I play more construct. <laughs> How about you? Do you like limited too? I mean, I used to play limited a lot back when I lived in Japan in Haruya. Uh, it's something I did almost every day. I played limited every day there until I got good, and then I stopped playing limited in arena. But nowadays I got back into limited because of the sweat sweet sweat suit invitational. Did you heard of it? No, I didn't. Okay, uh, I should. I will get you in there. Um, it's basically a, a pot of people <laughs> that play together limited, and we have like Ben Stock, uh, Hunter Pence, baseball player, uh, LSV, and it's just a group of people who play in that thing, and many limited streamers as well. And you play over an app where you can actually just you have real pots, right? And yeah. then in the end, you just play against each other. It's a whole tournament format. And there's a lot coming up. I just talked with them yesterday. It's crazy how big it's going to get. And oh, I wow. think it's the eighth one they do now. And as a non-limited player, I actually managed to win one of those, which I was like, hmm. Ooh, uh, thank sweet. you, Koma. Thank you, Koma. <laughs> oh, Koma. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, so you should definitely try it. But the time is a bit tricky since it's NA time. Um, you would have to be awake for a while. If you go far in the tournament, this is also why I usually stream late on this day, because if you go far further in the tournament, it's six a.m. in the morning. Okay. But yeah. now, I mean, now you stream streamer, right? No problem. Yeah, no problem. Uh, I don't need sleep anymore. <laughs> yeah, just. I get the energy from chat. Yeah, I mean, if you want, I really, I really put you in there. It's super fun. Yeah, I'll take a look and I'll, uh, yeah, 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 it sounds yeah. great. Why not? Yeah, it will be today, so you can actually have a look on, on, on different streamers oh, play. Yeah, it's every week. Okay. It's every week. It's, it's every week. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Cool. So, just let me know when I put you on the list, and awesome. I, I that's the that's the way I enjoy the limited the most because you have this feeling of well, you you see, okay, they draft this, it could be this, you know, the entire draft feeling, and not just drafting in a bot set. I mean, obviously, you have the people. But then you don't play against them. It's it's different, right? Yeah, yeah it's, it's it's definitely different. Yeah. So, what do you think of sealed in uh, Arena Open now that we just talked about it? I mean, I would love to have it constructed, of <laughs> course, because then I win more probably on average. Mm. Uh, but uh, it's it's all right. I'm loving these Arena Opens. I wish they had them every week. I mean, mm. just playing for money um, and uh, just getting. Mm. It's just so fun. It's also the league system on, on it's so so easy. You can just jam through your games in mm. a matter of three hours instead of having a tournament or Magic Online where you're sitting there for ten hours like a PDQ yeah. or something. Yeah. It's so comfortable. I'm I'm loving mm. it. More of it, please. So more in client tournaments, right? That, oh, absolutely. Yeah, that is definitely really great. Uh, the sealed now with Strixhaven. Uh, heard many say this is probably even more of a coin flip due to the fact that we have guilds, right? Um, so you open a, a sealed pool and you see, oh, well, none of my guilds are supported, but maybe you have a Cody, I don't know what people are going to do. But what, what is your thought about this with this set now? Yeah, and guilds, it's sometimes tough, right? You you, you either have like spread out your, your cards over all guilds and you sit there and you 
you can't really incorporate them. Sometimes you can make maybe a free color combination. Like you can put Prismari and Lore Hall into one deck. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes you just open the absolute nuts black green deck with like four rares and, mm -hmm. and, and support mm -hmm. multicolored comments and uncommons. Yeah, it's a little bit more random, but hey, um, there's still magic to be played. There's still mm -hmm. lots of deck building decisions you can make. You can splash certain cards, you can do not. And um, seal the sealed. Um, there's still a lot of skill that can mm -hmm. be put into play. Too. Yeah. Just, just not even sure. Is sealed right now? available in mtg it arena is. it is okay i just i have one open yeah. <laughs> okay because i was like hmm, i got a flashback that the last time there was no sealed in arena right when there was the miq uh really yeah there was, was no they, they they took away sealed and they were like yeah and the next miq gonna be sealed i was like cool <laughs> <laughs> good nice. practice and crookies made a funny tweet about it as well like thank you i trained so much this time <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i'm glad they actually have it again and uh, yeah i'm um, when is it is it two next week, week? Hmm. gonna have gonna to practice prepare. gonna have to practice <laughs> damn it yeah i i managed to got uh three times five wins on day two which is uh that's good yeah a lot of gems a lot of gems a lot of gems oh my god oh. <laughs> um, it became a meme i even stream them in discord sometimes so my maqs where i also go five wins usually on day two it's a classic i just don't know why it just stops there but consistency is a thing right uh we take this and so how did you qualify for your tournament was it an maq right it was it was yeah. um i wasn't qualified for like six months i took a big break and then um I, I got the fire back in December and played the historic qualifier on like right before Christmas with Sultan Midrange and historic. Uh, mm. Didn't go well. And then the next month there was another historic qualifier. Um, and on the same weekend there was a league weekend. So I had Tower of Severin testing with me, mm -hmm. sort of. I like was helping him for the league weekend. Um, uh, yeah, he was deciding to play Gruel and a lot of people on his team played Gruel. And then I like that was like Wednesday before the weekend and I like realized, wait a minute. There's this deck that's not really super explored. Like people know about it, but it's not played that much. This John Sacrifice deck, right? Mm. And then I just played that and played it in school and just won and won and won and won. And Gruel was like the best deck. Um, and Sultan Midrange was pretty good too back then. Those were like the mm. top decks. Yeah. Um, but this John Sacrifice just had good games against both of them. And uh, then mm. I played it in the qualifier. And uh, yeah, the, just um, there was some. I think I, I think I lost one match in the entire in the, on the entire weekend. So. Mm. That deck really um, went went all the way there. Yeah, I mean it's it's so cool to see. Like, I mean, you always hear a really good player before, but you you went through the MDG Arena way to to get back on it. This is this is really cool, right? Uh, like many 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 good players like you. That it's hard to get in it, right? Again, once you lost all the pro points and and all that stuff, it's a bit it's a bit a rough one. But you are back in, and I think you're gonna stay, right? I mean, it's incredible, right? Like you, you play this one qualifier and then you, oh, nice, we win and we have this qualification, but then you also be realistic. Mm -hmm. Like, are you going to stay on the tour? Probably not. You're going to have a middling result of 9-7 or something like that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a very tough tournament to cut on championship. Yeah. Um, so my mindset definitely wasn't like, yeah, yeah, let's go all into magic or anything. I was like, oh yeah, fun. I'm going to mm -hmm. play another one of these tournaments. Mm -hmm. Probably going to be one. Maybe we can make me help more than then I win the entire <laughs> thing, and now, now I can maybe make make a thing out of this uh, whole career. We'll see. It's, yeah, it's I mean, exciting. there's uh, definitely the content creation career as well, right? You don't have to be uh, grinding all the tournaments, and you're still around. I mean, there's so many streamers, uh, including me, who are not uh, in the call time championship right now, right, or something like that, and still stream and. Yeah, I'd love to combine the, the, the two of them. Yeah, that's definitely missing, I think. Because most of the pro player, they, they stream because they have to, right? Mm. But if you really enjoy streaming, it, it shines through. And that's, mm. that's, that's still content, I think, that's missing around. So you definitely fill that gap uh, really well. Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. I mean, you get like Christoph Prince, I guess. But yeah, it's, it's not many people mm. who yeah. like really competitive yeah. and stream a lot. Yeah, Christoph is definitely one of the others who's doing the same. Maybe Tomas here, yeah, but he's out of the Pro Tour now again, I think, and yeah. has to go in. Uh, it's 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 really hard, right? Like, I mean, you and rivals now, right? So you, you I'm you, actually not. You're not. <laughs> oh, you're in the Gauntlet now, right? Yeah, the Gauntlet. Oh, oh, oh wow. The, oh wow. Be a lot of tears at the end of the season. That's a huge one, huh? 
Yeah. yeah. So I mean, if you get in, then you have the rivals contracts, and then that's not even sh that's enough in Germany, right? With all everything you have going besides, uh, right? Well, enough for what? Like, uh, uh, to... we want to have a family with five kids, probably. No, 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 no. But I mean, for you, right, for for your living situation right now, yeah, with yeah, stream I, and I, everything, I'm right? Doing fine. I'm doing yeah. fine. I have, I have my, my living sense alone. I just have one room in an apartment. Yeah. Um, I mean, I can even make worlds at that gauntlet. That gauntlet gives you a worlds invite and an MPL if you make top four. So it's yeah, MPL good. is a good one. Yeah, that's a that's a. I mean, I wish you luck. Uh, so when is it actually? When is the gauntlet, and how how much time do you have to prepare? So uh, we don't know when worlds is. We have no idea when all the gauntlets are. We can just guess, and my guess is that it's going to be in like July-ish, sort mm. of that area of the of the season. Yeah, at the end of the season, basically. Probably before the new set, right? Or will it be after? Yeah, when is the new set coming out? July, I guess? I don't know. I think it's July, yeah. I think it's July or start August. I'm not 100% sure. Because usually it's like three months, right? Yeah, it's every three months. Hmm. Um, when was the last one? In April. Uh, when did, when did I mean, end? the arena one was on 15 April, and then you have it on like 20, 23rd April, when was the paper release. So you have... You have like this, yeah, that's a close one there. That's a early, close one. Early yeah. July is usually the summer set. Yeah. So like the 2019 was the 13th, 2020 was the 12th, and 2021 was the mm. 3rd. Yeah. So, so it's going to be around July. Uh, I, would I mean, guess. I hope they do it before, I guess, because I mean, if a new set, I mean, the, the good thing with a new set is you can just have a, a super meta break, a surpriser, right? But if you don't have it and someone else has it, then it's going to... Yeah, I, I would appreciate it not be, be before on your set because that gives it a little bit more randomness. And I think yeah. in an established meta game that's like already established, I, I yeah. can make a good choice. So that that, yeah. that would be better for 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 my um, strengths. Yeah, well, it's gonna gauntlet is really huge, and that's like the the biggest tournament you played, I guess, in ever. Ever. I mean, yeah. this tournament is just insane. Yeah. I mean, twenty-four people. It's not that much, right? It's not <laughs> that is, that much, is I mean, it's not a two hundred call time championship, right? It's just yeah, if you can do it there, you can do it there. Right? It's just stupid. Yeah, the competition is also not insane or anything, but mm. yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's no MPL players, right? They cannot. They, you 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 don't have them, but you definitely have uh, Christoph Prince is also playing it, I guess, right? Uh, no, he's not. No. Oh, but um, we have Jan Moritz Merkel, a fellow German, oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Um, Thomas Pacorni, of yeah. course. Um, yeah. Why isn't Christoph in it? Was so, the one he won just too early? Yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> like, they're only the people from the um, Zendikar Championship yeah. and the Carlton Championship. The top eight of best performing challengers there. So oh, and, that's and, a bit, and he would deserve it so much, man. <laughs> he's, just, he's like, every time he plays in something, it's just doing so well. Like... It's it's ridiculous, Christoph. Yeah. Christoph. Yeah. Yeah, he's good. Yeah. He's definitely good. Yeah, that's that's an unlucky one there, but yeah, I would definitely wish you luck. I mean, you already probably go with the same team with uh, Jonathan and others since it worked out really well for you, right? Uh, for the gauntlet, we won't know yet. It's it's fine in the future. It's probably going to be very small teams that mm. I'm choosing, like two people mm. maybe, and then other mm. people might help. But mm. I, you don't want to. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I'm staying with the same team for the Strict Saving Championship. Yeah, mm. I've, I've had a lot of fun with them. They're enthusiastic, mm. they're, they're yeah. like driven, they have the fire. and yeah, That's they, important, yeah. yeah. Work a lot. Yeah, because it's a gauntlet, right? Do you want to team up with someone in the gauntlet? Or, you know, it's a it's an awkward yeah. one there. It's different than in a championship. Yeah. I think you want to maximize one, maximum right? maybe one person, I think. Yeah. Maybe three, but one yeah. probably. And because you probably want someone out of the gauntlet because they're going to have like really high ambitions, like mm -hmm. everyone else that you might want to test with, they don't mm -hmm. have ambitions, right? So it's true. You, yeah. you, you probably want a person that's in the gauntlet. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, before we jump further, uh, any questions here? I actually have to head out now, Danny, but mm. uh, Danny, I want to thank you both for your time. This has been great. I'll definitely watch the recording to see what I miss. And yep. uh, congratulations again on the big win. That was awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks, Angel. Thank you. Have a, have a good call. Um, I want to <laughs> ask, you know, I'm sure we could talk all day about how you farm people in Magic the Gathering with rogues and whatever else. 
but uh, I, I've also noticed a little uh, farm to table action um, in my small amount of time uh, following you on social media. And uh, I'm curious about that delicious looking food that you made for like last week or something. Was it sushi? Was it handmade sushi? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I, I <laughs> yeah, essentially. Um, but it's it's uh, my my girlfriend. Uh, she's she's from Taiwan actually, and she has a, a very good Korean friend here. And um, the Korean friend taught her how to make gimbap, which is um, mm-hmm. a Korean form of sushi. Danny is already. Yeah, I saw it. it. I was like, that is that is Korean sushi there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, I, exactly. okay, yeah. Um, and look, you look, I'm not that big of a normal sushi guy because I don't like salmon as much. I don't like fish as much. But uh, this gimbap it was basically with like uh, minced meat and egg and uh, some vegetables. It was really delicious and really wanted. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have more of that. And um, yeah, they both prepared a lot and we prepared it together then. And then uh, mm. I made some for social media. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, no, I, I, I just saw that. That was definitely the, uh, the winner uh, of, of the week today. Yeah. I, I should make an Instagram and post more of this. Like, you have to make Arne Cuisine. Arne Cuisine. <laughs> I mean, uh, table, man. Table. Yeah, I mean, the Italians can the do palm. it. German can do it as well, right? So, like, sure, um, sure. you need to, uh, Mango needs some competition. He's like alone on that, uh, the top of the MTG Cuisine. So, definitely need some competition there. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's definitely crazy. Like, how, how fast a life, I mean, a life can change, right? And, that's basically it, right? I mean, how, how does your girlfriend cope with it? I mean, I was there sometimes in some funny streams and made memes myself, right? But yeah. everything goes well, I assume. It's just also a big life changer, right? Like schedule wise and to put yeah, everything yeah, up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, she, uh, she wishes that I had some more time, of course, sometimes, but uh, like after a while, we, she, she, she got used to it too. Mm. And she obviously wants me to, to be successful mm. uh, career wise. And um, yeah, it's cool to see we're we're she, we're both young, right? We're both looking still. What's what's our path? What's our passion? Mm. What what are we gonna do? What's mm. our future? And so we're just motivating each other, and and she's helping me out with like uh, business wise mm. things, uh, design mm. or anything. That's really cool. That's definitely nice if she's supportive and helping you. It makes everything way easier. That's that that is for sure. And I mean, I mean, I guess the stream schedule is also dictated by that I, I remember back then when i tried streaming you stream during the day because after dinner you have to spend time with your, with your girlfriend right it's a it's a thing but uh, yeah you get used to it and uh, i mean it's it's super cool to see you succeed and you like if i take your success and compare it with like i mean christoph had a huge impact but we have aaron gertler right to one one like the dream act back in the day and austin but austin just was like Streaming is not his thing, right? He just memes around, that's more his thing. And then we have, uh, who else? Uh, Tomas tried it after top fouring, right? We had some people who, who were trying it, but I would say yours is probably the most explosive I, I witnessed <laughs> out of all of them. And that just speaks for your skills as a streamer, right? Uh, yeah, maybe. Maybe I think what also made a huge impact was the personality showing at the Kartan Championship. Uh, yep. I think showing emotions, showing personality, um, mm like screaming or cheering into the camera yeah. is something that people don't yeah. usually see yeah. because everyone is sitting there stone-faced mm-hmm. so i think that gave me a huge boost and i think that's yeah. something that maybe yeah. will be adopted by more players after that. yeah i agree uh, i definitely agree many many just are so focused there was one match that was absolutely hilarious it was be- between nori and between mori and who was the, the, the other japanese player also haruya player yeah yeah and yeah 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 yeah, exactly and one play was like this no reaction (laughs) literally 40 minutes and mori was like whoa no and it's like he's like really in the game and it was so funny and then people in chat were like oh he blinked twice i think he's nervous now (laughs) but yeah you're definitely right Uh, you definitely were more emotional and and you showed it in the end and it was really funny to see like you didn't even know what to say you were like it's so much in thing exploded in your head at the same time you're like um yeah uh, <laughs> so yeah it's, i mean must be huge because until that point you told me you went game for game right and you never let this go comp- i mean if you're in the top eight it's different you know you already won right but once you realize it it must be huge yeah yeah it's like of course it, of course you i mean yeah it's i mean 
yeah you of course you think and you you realize where you are and you get a little bit more nervous and stuff mm. um, but you're used to it through all the experience you're just used mm. to it and you just uh, mm. keep on keep on playing essentially i mean yeah you, um, you you've been out there for a while right farming tournaments so yeah, <laughs> yeah and now my fish, I'm... and now with uh, maybe uh, some hope out there in the world with the vaccines and everything we still don't know much more about organized play right it's still a bit uh unknown but I have a good feeling for maybe end of the year or, or next year because there are like places that do events with 10,000 people and 5,000 like in Barcelona they tried it and now in Switzerland they try something in summer too like the festivals with 10,000 people so it's it's coming back slowly um, but then again in other countries it's it's just really sad what's happening in like India or like other places right so it's we're gonna see we're gonna see and I'm yeah. pretty sure you would like to travel again as well. Yeah, 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 of course. I love traveling. But I think like just from a production uh, wise, I think it's a lot smarter to keep doing these big events online or at mm. least at some of these. Like they're just so much cheaper, so much easier for everyone. Mm. You don't have to buy a deck in real life. Um, I think it might just stay stay online for these really huge events. Uh, but I hope they bring something back similar to Grand Prix. Mm. For people to meet. I get the feeling that the, the things that's going to happen in paper is more like the older formats, like modern, because the crowd, that crowd still wants that, right? And now the the new crowds, they are more like into this. Like, uh, I mean, I told you once, Mori never played Magic with papers and I was in the gauntlet. Imagine an MPL player that never played with paper cards. I mean, it's like, like there's a new, this is a new generation of Magic coming in as well, uh, just with Arena. And I think they will adapt for sure. But yeah, I think we had a really long talk and it was super productive. But before we end this, obviously, question round again. Um, if if the people who watch here, they're recording now, because I know many of you are working today, uh, let me know. I maybe slip some questions to Arne and you get them answered. Sure. Robbie? Mike? Uh, I don't... I don't really have any questions other than the ones or, that were already answered. So, um, I'm interested. I, I, I might have uh, I might have missed the beginning of the show, so I'm not hmm. sure what was already talked about. But uh, I'm interested in just uh, your first takes on the mystical archive set, just like the power level of historic, the hmm. changing format. I mean, how this format has been basically just completely flipped on its head. I feel like with just one set. Um, I don't know. What, what do you think? What what cards are you liking? Uh, are, is faithful saluting gas? Is it a scam? What, what do we feel? Um, I I love it. I, I love the cheap spells. It makes for for more intricate turns, for more choices. Faithful saluting brainstorm all difficult to to resolve. The rope has gotten me already. Uh, which I've never like, I'm playing standard <laughs> or something. I, I usually never rope in historic. I I got burned out by the rope a couple times lately. So it it, it adds a lot of compli complexity. Um, which is good for skilled players usually because then you can really hone out that that skill part of the magic, and um, it has a, it's had yeah it's had a huge impact. I mean, brainstorm is great, memory lapse is great, um, looting is good, abandoned harvest is a nice one. There's so many good cards, and uh, nothing feels too broken. You know, like the combo decks, mythics mastery or something like that. They, they can also be easily interrupted with. You have Inquisition Fortsies, we have good counter spells in the form of Memory Labs, of course. Um, we have great Graveyard Hate. So it, it feels like balance out right now. Um, Tainted Pact could be worrisome if that if someone finds a list that's like really broken because that's just that's such an easy to... It's a hard to disrupt combo and such an easy to set up combo with uh, two cheap spells that you just have to draw together. Hmm. So yeah, I, I, I'm loving it. And um, so far it, it has seem to be a great experiment introducing these cards nice yeah uh i i i tend to agree it's it's all about the skilled decisions the, the those cantrips it really really punishes you if you do not know which cards to put back on top if you do not know which cards to discard or yeah even just w whether or not you're supposed to cast this faithful slitting that's going to be card disadvantage yeah i i i, I totally I, I hear all that it makes it makes a lot of sense you, Mike? Yeah, so sort of bouncing off of what Robbie said, um, I've heard from some people, and I think Nassif uh, mentioned this in his stream, that he likes Memory Lapse. Like, he thinks it's a better card more often than, like, just straight Counterspell is. Have you felt that? 
as well. Uh, do you think memory lapse is like too strong, or do you like having that sort of effect in the format? Do you think it makes it like more enjoyable, more flexible, more decision points, that sort of thing? I haven't felt like a card is too broken or anything, or too strong. Um, I, I actually, I think I like the card. I mean, d saying it's more stronger than Connor Spell, I would have to. I will, I've never played with Connor Spell that much, but <laughs> being able to put the card back on top means if it's a really impactful, important card they have there, then um, they can just recast it, right? Connor Spell denies that ability. Um, straight up better, I, would, I wouldn't I would say it's too strong right now, that's my assessment. I was a little low on the card actually at the beginning because I felt like, oh, I'm countering this and then they just play a Nissa on the next turn. Like, oh, it's like Aoife gusting a Nissa in a control deck, right? Anyone knows that, you, oh, sh yeah, well, I, I get one more turn, but <laughs> if I'm not using my time there, then I'm mm -hmm. gonna get doomed anyways. So I think the card is fine and uh, fit the perfect piece right mm -hmm. now, that, that would be my assessment. I think that's a really good question because the card itself seems less good against bombs, but really good against cheap cards. That's where, like, if you time walk them on like a grow spiral or something, like, <laughs> have fun <laughs> playing that card again. That's that's how I felt with like gust or, or like memory lapse. If you can pull that yeah. off early, it's great. Later on, it's just. Ugh. Yeah, well, it's, I mean, it's very different than counter spell, but hmm. I, I do feel like in in. There are going to be many, many situations where your opponent is trying to resolve a spell that actually is not going to win them the game, and if they are hoping to find something off the top of their deck at some point in the next number of turns to, to turn or board state around, I do think there are quite a... I mean, it's it's the classic, like, Plow Under, yeah, Aether Gust, whatever. I mean, denying them their next draw step, it definitely has, uh, you know, a potential benefit, mm. but, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> to say it's it's better than Counterspell, I think, is a, is a bit inflammatory from Gab mm. there. Uh, it's also interesting with like cards like Faithless Looting and Brainstorm and, and so on. You have a way to not get stuck on that card, right? So I think it's a fair card right now. That I, I like the card a lot. It's just it's just fun. It just feels good to play it. Yeah. Um, like counter spells in general feels good as well. But yeah, uh, I think I like it. And hopefully uh, for the people who watch this later, I will also post this on YouTube, but it's going to be a week later. Um, yeah, sadly, we didn't have that many people today everyone is working out huh? busy people but it's normal and yeah uh thank you for coming by and having you here even in this small group and thanks a lot man appreciate it i i really appreciate it always love talking about magic yeah yeah we do this a lot here and yeah i'm gonna um, stop the recording <laughs>